Uh, hello, so continuing on this weekly contest 167, the last problem, shortest path in a grid <coughs> with obstacle elimination. Um, let me just reset this for a second. So the problem says that um, it's problem 1293, shortest path in a grid with obstacle elimination. So given an M by N grid, where each cell is either zero, which means it's empty, or one, which is an obstacle. In one step, you can move either up or move down or left or right, but you can only move to an empty cell. If the value is one, there is an obstacle. You can move there, but with a caveat. So basically you have K obstacles. At most, you have like a, a buffer like of K obstacles that you can, as, as long as you haven't consumed these K obstacles that you could, you could still go through an obstacle essentially. And so the, the question asks us to return the minimum number of steps to walk from the upper left corner, the start position, to the lower right corner, which is the destination that we want to go to, um, given that we can eliminate at most k obstacles as we go. So we don't have to eliminate like exactly k, but we have from 0 to k, if we encounter obstacles, we can, we can eliminate as long as the, num the total number doesn't exceed k. And if we can do that, either because there is no path or um, we have more than k obstacles in our way, then we can return minus 1. <coughs> and what we want here is the minimum number of steps. <coughs> so you can see here right away, it's the minimum number of steps. And it's, uh, it's sort of a graph because you have a grid and you have these directions up, down, left, right that constitute the neighbors. And um, we have... The, what, what the problem asks us is the minimum number of steps, so it kind of asks us for shortest path. Um, so right away we can think about using BFS on a graph, because this is um, um, this is kind of a yeah just a graph. So we can use BFS to find the shortest path. Um, we, of course, by taking a, into account that we have at most k obstacles to um, to use, right? Uh, okay, so let's see how we can solve this problem. Um, okay, so as we said, we can use BFS to solve this problem um, and just look for shortest path, right? From basically 0, 0, the start position, um, to uh, like the number of rows minus 1, um, the last row basically, and the last column. And essentially, this is our start position and this is our destination, right? So for BFS, we need to figure out a couple of things, right? We need to figure out um, neighbors, the neighbors of each position, each node or position. How can we compute these? And w what do we put in the queue? And we also will need visited sets so that we don't repeat the delay or visit the same node multiple times and then end up maybe with an infinite loop, right? So we need to figure out what to put in everything. And for this problem specifically, we need to figure out how can we handle the case where, because we have handled the, the at most k obstacles that we can use, right? So it's not that we, we, don't, we can't go through any obstacles, we can go through at most k one obstacles, right? So let's just number these up. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So for one, the neighbors, so the neighbors for a node, it's very simple. It's just the problem says up, left, um, down, and sorry, up, down, left, right, down, left, right. right okay. So if we are at a position IJ, um, that would mean that, well, up is, up is, I plus, uh, sorry, up is I, J minus 1, right, going up. Um, down is I, um, J plus 1. And left is um, I minus 1, J. And right is I plus 1, J. Right? So we know the neighbors, we will just need to filter by a couple of things, right? So if, the other thing is that if the grid, the element at the position of the neighbor here, let's call these maybe x, y, right? 
if the element at position x, y for the neighbor essentially, so is equal to one, which means it's an obstacle here. So we can still go through it. Then and um, the number of obstacles we have so far, so number of obstacles so far is less than or equal to k that means we can still it's still a, a neighbor that, that that we are allowed to go through or maybe it's just zero and we can just go through it anyway right so if grid x y equal to zero or this right then um, we can go through this neighbor or this is a valid neighbor right and of course we'd have to check the boundaries for x x and y right so then, this is a valid neighbor. Um, there is just one other thing we need to do, which is so that we don't repeatedly visit something, which is here, we need to check also that, um, that it's not in the visited set. So not visited yet, right? So to check that a node is not visited yet, how can we identify it, right? So to, to what do, what, what, what should we add to visit it so that next time we don't um, we don't uh, go through it again? So what you what identifies uniquely identifies a neighbor is identifies a node here. It's um, its position, right? And how many stops we have so far, right? Because maybe we pass it through like let's say a, a node, and we have only used zero obstacles and we are allowed let's say one obstacle and the value is one then yeah we can go through it but if we let's say pass to it again and maybe we are we have already or let's say we are allowed two obstacles let's say we used one we can still go through it this way right because this is a different way but with all the same values that means we will have the exact same outcome and there is no need to go through it again so this is what we add to visited set uh, values to add to visit it set. Okay, so now with this we can say that okay we handled one, and this is how we can handle adding to the visited set in these two places, and handling at most the special case of at most k obstacles we did it here also. This is actually four. So now the only thing remaining is what should go in the queue, right? So what should go in the queue? Again, it should be something that uniquely identifies the queue, the, the, the node. So again, we would need i, we will need um, the, the coordinates of the node, so i, j, and the number of obstacles we have used so far. But for th since we are looking for BFS, for shortest path, and, w and that means basically we want to return the minimum number of steps, so we wouldn't we would want our queue to pop each time the smallest the, the node with the smallest number of steps right that's how we would get to um, that's how we will have the shortest path right so we will need steps as the first element of the queue as the first value in the tuple that we will put in the queue why is that because when we do pop left right in on the queue we want to get out the the smallest the node with the smallest number of steps right and we want to explore that first right because that's what will get us the shortest path and so this is the value that we will add to the queue and so here this is the we have our second step here uh, our uh, second point here and now we have almost everything. There is just one last thing that we will need to find out is when do we stop? When do we know we reach the destination? So what is our stop condition, right? So, well, when we get something out of the queue, um, if the position is the last row, on the last row and on the last column, that means we are done, we reach the destination, right? Just normal, um, path from a node to another node using BFS, right? So if that's the case, then we can just return the steps, right? Okay, 
So now we have everything we need for our BFS. We have, we know how to compute the neighbors. We know the, uh, what we'll need to put in our queue. We know the visited, what we'll need to put in the visited set. And we know how to handle the special case in this problem, right? So what we will do is we will just <coughs> start the queue with the start position, which is zero, zero. And at that point, we will have used zero obstacles and the number of steps would be zero. So we will add zero, zero, uh, zero. So this is the position. This is the number of steps and zero obstacles. And we'll add that to the visited set also. And then we'll do our BFS. Um, while the queue is not empty, we'll pop um, a node, which is this, something like this. We'll check if it's, we haven't reached the destination. If we haven't, we'll go through the neighbors um, and then do this to check to check that it's a valid node. If it is, we add it to the queue and we add it to the visited set. And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so let's code this solution up and uh, make sure it passes the test cases. Okay, so now let's, um, let's write our BFS solution here. Um, okay, so what we'll need is, as we said, we need first to, um, to define, so just I'm going to define something that tells me the number of rows and the number of columns. Then the problem says we have at least one row and one column, so we don't need to worry about a grid zero here. And we need to define our queue, so it's collections. And we'll need to add the start position and import collections here. And we'll need to add the start position, so the start is the number of steps, the start position, and the number of obstacles we have so far, which is zero. <coughs> and we'll need to define our visited set and add the start position again. So for a visited node, for a node to identify as visited or not, we just need the start position and the obstacle count, which is zero. So this would be I, J, and the obstacle count. And here, what we are adding is steps, the position of the node, and the obstacle count. <coughs> and so now we'll do our BFS, which would be while the queue is not empty, we will pop the first element of the queue, of the queue. So here steps I, J, and the obstacle count. And we'll check if it's the last row and the last column, right? which means we reach the destination, and at that point we can just return the number of steps we have. Um, otherwise, we'll go through the neighbors, so for x and y, and for the obstacles when we reach that neighbor, I'm just going to um, say it's OC obstacles. Um, so in, I'm going to define a separate function that computes the neighbors, the valid neighbors that is, and so to do that, I'm going to define it here. So it gets ij and obstacle count. And so we'll go through the neighbors, which we said are um, up, sorry, left, right. Sorry, up, uh, down, left, right. Um, and like this, ij plus one. And we'll check that th it's in valid like indices, right? So first we'll check that, so rows, and same thing for y. And then we'll check that it's valid in terms of that, um, if it's an obstacle that, either it's not an obstacle or it's an obstacle and we haven't yet reached k obstacles that we are allowed. But if it's not, then we shouldn't um, consider it a neighbor, right? And so here, let's just count. So we have the up, we have obstacle count so far, right? So let's just add the grid the grid at position x y. If it's zero, then nothing will be added, so it'll still be good. If it's one, one will be added, and we'll check if the new obstacle count um, is still less than or equal to k, right? 
And then we will make sure that we haven't visited it yet, right? So we'll make sure it's not visited yet. And only if all of these are valid, then that means this is a valid neighbor that we can explore. And so we'll use this Python thing yield that just says, at the end, it will return all the elements that, um, that are valid using this criteria. And this yield just says, return this to the for loop here. And w when a new one also goes through, we say return this one again, right? So it's just a nice way to, uh, to separate um, things so that the code is more clear. So why obst new? Uh, we need this new obstacle count. And here, um, we can now, because we know it's a valid um, neighbor, so we can append it to the queue, which means we will need steps plus one, right? Because this is a new, s we add the step moving from this node to this neighbor, right? And the position is x, y, and the obstacle count is OC here. And we'll need to also add it to the set so that we don't revisit it again. And so that would be also x, y, and obstacle count. And then at the end, if we didn't find the destination at all, we return minus one. run this <laughs> okay sounds looks good okay so that passes um, in terms of time complexity um, here this at worst in the worst case um in the worst case for this problem we'll add in the queue um m by n row m by n cells right because that's the number of cells in the grid but since also we have k obstacles and we will we will add them at most k times right because maybe we pass through it and we have consumed only one obstacles and we pass through it and we have consumed two obstacles and we keep going like that so at most in the worst case in the worst case we will explore um we will put in the queue um m by n cells k times right so that means basically that in the worst case our um, time complexity will be O of M by N by K, right? And similar reasoning we can do for the space, space complexity here because we will add to the Q also at most M by N cells K times. So here, why is this affects the time complexity? Because the while loop goes through the content of Q. So the, the worst case would be the number of things in the Q. And same thing for space complexity. The space complexity is the, we are using mostly Q and visited set. So the Q will contain at most M by N cells K times. So same thing, O of M, N by, O of M, N, K. And the visited set, same thing, right? It's uniquely identified by the cell and the obstacle count. So same thing, M by N by K. So the space complexity is also the same thing. Um, <coughs> So this is BFS. We could also solve this problem using um, uh, Dijkstra's algorithm, um, <coughs> which is which would be very similar. We'll just need to change a couple of things. So we would didn't need this visited set check here, and instead of using Q for Dijkstra's algorithm, we will need to use a heap, right? And so we'll just start out with this list with the same um, content, right? And instead of this visited set, we will need to just um, a map that contains the distance, right? So that we can know if we can, if we found a better distance, right? And so it will identify by the same thing that was in the visited set, which means i, j, and obstacle. And it will map from basically i, j, obstacles to um, distance or steps, right? And then when we don't pop from the queue, we pop from the heap queue, right? So that would be heap queue dot heap pop right from q or let's call it priority q right that's what we are using for dextra so we'll need to import heap q um, and then this is still valid we'll still check if we reach at the end this way but 
we will need to check if the distance right um, to go to um, this if we already have something better right then the current distance that means that or then the current steps that means that let's call this maybe steps map that will be easier So if we already have a better distance than a better number of steps than steps, there is no need to explore farther because if we explore farther, we will only get steps plus one, right? Because the neighbors will incur another number of steps. So if we already have something better, there is no need to continue exploring. And so we just skip with using this continue here. And we'll still do the neighbors check here, but same thing here also is that if we already have um, let's say we already have for this neighbor um, a step that is better than um, so only if we have already the number of steps that we already have for this is bigger than the current one that we are going to try then that means the current one is better so we'll try it otherwise we shouldn't so if it's if what we already had is better than steps plus one then we should skip and continue, right? Otherwise, we should add it. Um, the other way to write this is if this is only if this is bigger than steps plus one, then we should then we should add the neighbors and explore this path because otherwise we already have a better path, right? Um, and so here we will need to replace this with the new better path, which is um, steps plus one. Um, the only other thing is that this is a map, so maybe the key doesn't exist. And so what should be the default value? So we want a default val value that will go through, right? And so we want it to be always um, bigger than steps. So to do that, we're just going to pass in the maximum possible value, which is float env. And we'll do the same thing for this one here. And here, instead of append, since it's now a priority queue, we need to push, right, into the heap queue. So heap queue dot heap push. And we don't need to add to visited. And that's pretty much it. So instead of just keeping track of it, uh, if it's visited or not, we keep track of the number of steps to go to that node. And we only continue processing if there is potential to find a better number of steps, right? That's essentially what we are doing here. And here we need to push to the priority queue and push that node and that's pretty much it. Uh, it's not queue, it's while priority queue. Okay, so it looks good, let's submit. Okay, cool, so that passes. Um, yeah, so we saw how to solve this problem using both um, BFS, simple BFS, and uh, using um, Dextra's algorithm. Um, yeah, so that's all for this problem. Thanks for watching. and.